all plants and animals, not just in the parks, but in the dune areas, are all protected by state and federal law. And that brings me to another guy that lives up here. He's a little endangered beach mouse. He's no bigger than this as an adult. Weighs the equivalent of two nickels, but I call him the farmer of the dunes. They have a very big job. Beach mice are a subspecies of the old field mouse, which is a white-footed mouse. Over time, they lost their pelage colors. Their coats went more white. If you've ever seen like a hamster or any other rodent, they have pouches in their mouth and they stuff all this stuff in their food to take back to the burrow. Well, a lot of it falls out and a lot of it gets scattered when they're on the stems grabbing it. These guys are part of this dune system. They've, they've adapted to dunes. They've adapted their food habits to take advantage of uh, what's grown by dune habitats. They're part of the diversity of life in these really unique ecosystems. Over a period of time, the population of Choctahatchee beach mice had whittled down to only three locations, Topsail Hill Preserve State Park, Grayton Beach State Park, and on Shell Island at St. Andrews State Park. Through a multi-agency effort, in 2005, beach mice were reintroduced to Deer Lake State Park and a conservation area in the neighboring Water Sound community. They've been tracking there at Deer Lake and Water Sound for several years now, and beach mice are doing well according to their tracking surveys. What good is a beach mouse? I've been asked that question many times by people throughout my career. To me, the most simple answer is they're part of a functioning ecosystem. And in my mind, they belong there. Whatever we can do to keep them there is imperative. It's, it's conservation. Sponsored by the St. Joe Community Foundation, supporting the arts, education, health care, and the environment.